another spoiler-free character and casting video for the Wheel of Time TV show. We have three characters to discuss today who are part of the group called the Tuatha'an, or the Traveling People. And we have three very exciting cast members to get to know. I'm really thrilled to be able to bring you this video in time for the casting announcement, and I hope to be able to do more of that in the future. If you're new to the channel, please check the other videos I've done in this series because the show has an incredible looking cast so far. First, I'm going to give you some background on who these characters are, but without spoiling plot points from the books. So these videos are safe for people new to the series. First up, who are the Tuatha'an? They are a group of people who follow a way of life they call the way of the leaf. This is an absolute commitment to nonviolence. They practice the philosophy of actively avoiding any harm to any other living being, even to the point of not committing violence in self-defense. To go along with this practice, they carry no weapons and are vegetarians. They keep dogs, which are used as some defense, and as the name The Traveling People suggests, they don't stay in one place and tend to avoid large cities and gatherings. They live in wagons and have no permanent home. They are pretty well known throughout the lands and the continent, but some of the reputation that they've earned doesn't exactly match reality. Some people think of them as habitual thieves. Others accuse them of kidnapping children, or at least trying to convert them to the way of belief. Others know them as skilled craftspeople and would go to them to mend pots and the like. Probably related to this, many people actually call them tinkers. They also have a unique style by which they may be recognized. They favor flashy, bright colors and prints for their clothing and pair them in combinations considered odd or garish by other cultures. This goes with their equally colorful painted wagons. A big part of their communal culture revolves around music and dancing. Another thing that keeps the traveling people together and moving about besides the way of the leaf is their quest to find what they call the song. No one seems to know exactly what the song is or how they would know it if they found it, but they have rituals around asking after the song with every person they meet. I definitely think of the Tuatha'an as sort of the hippies of the Wheel of Time, but like all cultures in the Wheel of Time, there are a variety of real world inspirations that partially contributed to Robert Jordan's creation. In this case, those include the Irish traveling people called the Tuatha de Danann and the Roma people. The Way of the Leaf also has similarities to the concept of Ahimsa, which is a principle found in Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism. In the first band of traveling people that we meet, their leader is called the Mahdi, or Seeker, and his name is Rain. His wife is Ela, and we also get to know one of their grandsons named Aram. Both Rain and Ela are very much at ease with their way of life and welcoming to the extent they can be of outsiders, at least those that don't seem to pose a threat. They're certainly disapproving of those they meet who don't follow the way of the leaf but Rain is likely to simply live and let live, and he's even made friends among outsiders. And Ela, while she might quietly show her disapproval, she has a warm heart. Both of them, but especially Ela, have some concern over their grandson Aram, who doesn't quite fit in with the group. Aram has less contentment and more something to prove than you would typically see among Tuatha'an. And he's also very interested in outsiders. I'll tease you a little bit by saying that over the course of the series, getting to learn a little bit about the history of the Tuatha'an is pretty interesting. But the central conflict for these characters is how are they going to survive by following the way of the leaf in a world where there are creatures of the Dark One who basically live to kill. And what roles are they going to have to play in a story that's centered around the conflict between the shadow and the world? For the actors cast in these roles, I want to talk first about the Irish actress and singer Maria Doyle Kennedy. It has been known for a while that she'd been cast in the show, but without knowing for which role. 
So of course there was a ton of speculation in the fandom, all of which was wrong. The fans were pretty much all convinced she would be playing an Aes Sedai, myself included. But we now know that she will be playing Ela. I think the variety of different roles suggested for Doyle Kennedy is reflective of the fact that she has incredible range as an actress and would likely be excellent in many different roles. She has been acting for nearly three decades and is well known for numerous TV shows, including The Tudors, Orphan Black, Outlander, Downton Abbey, Dexter, and more. A lot of these shows are currently streaming and well worth checking out if you want to get a taste of her acting abilities. She also has had a prolific career as a singer and songwriter, both as a solo artist and in bands including the Black Velvet Band. Now that we know she will be playing Ela, I could actually see her singing ability being incorporated into the show. It would really be a missed opportunity not to, since the Tuathan are known for their music and singing. If you do nothing else, check out some videos of Maria singing. I will provide you with some links. Next, we have Daryl McCormack, another Irish actor who will be playing Aram. This one is much less of a surprise. Like Maria Doyle Kennedy, we knew that McCormack had been cast for a while and we didn't know for which role. But for McCormack, Aram was always among the speculated roles from the beginning, probably because he certainly looks the part. Then when he teasingly responded to a fan on Twitter and then liked another tweet talking about his potential casting as Aram, he almost confirmed it. As for McCormack's acting history, he is best known for his role in the BBC drama Peaky Blinders. Now, he actually plays a character, Isaiah, who is part of the Peaky Blinders gang that had been recurring in the series since the beginning. But McCormack replaced the original actor starting in the fifth season because of scheduling issues with the first actor. This is fairly unusual and, I will say, very demanding for the actor coming in as a replacement because they can't simply make the role their own. They have to consider who came before. I did have some difficulty finding information on the general reception for McCormack in this role, though the show itself is as popular and well received as ever. He also has other credits. They do go back to about 2016 in film and television. He's one of the relatively younger newcomers in the Wheel of Time cast, though he does have uh, some experience in the theater as well. I am also going to link for you an interview he did relatively recently. It doesn't discuss the Wheel of Time, but it was just really lovely to get to get a sense of who he is as a person. Finally, we have Narinder Samra, an English actor who will be playing the role of Rain. Samra has done a lot of his work as a BBC radio drama actor and has worked in theater, film, and television. His most noteworthy film credit is the lead role in the 2011 British movie Land Gold Women, which won numerous awards at various film festivals, including a Best Actor win at the Real Heart International Film Festival for Samra. From the clips I've seen, it seems to be a powerful film, and there are some parallels in that it deals with a family in conflict over being caught between two cultures. It's also worth noting that there is unofficial reporting that Daryl McCormack will be appearing in three out of the eight episodes in season one. If this is accurate, then I think that would probably extend to the Tuatha'an in general, including Rain and Ela. And if so, it's a bit more than I would expect just based on material in book one. So it's possible that these characters are going to be fleshed out a little bit in our introduction to them in this series. I'm going to save more discussion of that for a future video, which will include spoilers. But I'm excited to think it's possible that the show is going to be spending a little bit more time developing this culture and these characters. I hope to be able to continue to bring you new casting and character videos around the time when more casting announcements are made. I can't guarantee I will always have information early enough to be able to time it this well, but that will be my goal. So be sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date on casting information. And I also have planned some videos to discuss what this latest casting information can tell us to expect from season one and more. 
If you're following my reread series, you can look for the Great Hunt videos coming up soon as well. Stay tuned and I'll see you next time.